over the years at Knifeware, we've been making many knife makers, blacksmiths, sharpener friends in Japan. Let me count. Over 50. We are very excited to visit them on our annual trip, but there are a lot of things going around in Japanese knife making world. I'm here to share with you some of the insights what's going to happen with these five exciting blacksmiths in 2023. First up, you probably heard us talk about Masashi Yamamoto-san a lot. He's definitely one of our favorite blacksmiths. For those of you who don't know about who he is, here's a little bit of background. Masashi Yamamoto-san was born in this blacksmithing family in Sanjo, started working with his older brother, Kazumi Yamamoto-san at Yoshikane Hamono. In 2013, he started his own workshop. So, this year, 2023, is his 10th year anniversary of his own workshop. Now he has two apprentices work for him, and he is making one of the most beautiful knives that we carry. Over the years, he's been developing and refining his own way of making knives. One of which is forging the blade into the shape that is close to the finished product. And now he's passing down those skills and knowledges to those who's working for him. So because he forges a knife and makes this very gradual taper from the heel to the tip, when he sharpens them, he has to sharpen the heel part and tip part at different angles. That means you get much finer precise tip and a little bit more robust at the heel. First thing that you notice about his knives is how beautiful this is. This is Kuroshu and this finish is developed and invented by Masashi Yamamoto-san. In 2022, he launched two of the new lines, Kokuen and Kaijin. These two have such a striking beauty as well, but he uses very similar steel to his previous two lines, Kuroshu and Shiroshu, which is the SLD stainless steel, and also he likes to use the steel called VS1. So when we visited him in spring of 2022, he showed us how he hardens these steels and showed us that he will be able to make these steel slightly harder than the other blacksmiths can. So that means he'll be able to produce the knife which will hold the edge longer than the knife that's been produced by the different blacksmith who's using the same steel. So his knives been getting better over the years. And so we're very excited to see how he's actually making the progress in the future. By the way, this is 10th year anniversary for his own workshop. And he told us that he is planning on making something special for his 10th year anniversary. We're very excited to see what he comes up with. Next one up is Isamitsu Hamono. Isamitsu Hamono is run by these two young blacksmiths who used to work for a Teruyasu Fujiwara. Fujiwara-san is this legendary blacksmith. We've been carrying his knives for many, many years. Definitely, he's the one of the most favorite blacksmiths among all the knife makers we deal with. These two young blacksmiths Abe-san and Kanatsu-san started their own workshop in 2022, last year. And we were actually lucky enough to pay a visit in November of 2022. When they're working at Fujiwara-san's workshop, they were basically help making Fujiwara knives. There weren't much to, I guess, experiment with. So when they started their own workshop, they got very excited because they had all those liberty and freedom to test out what they want to try. So they've been producing knives that slightly different shapes from what they were making at the Fujiwara's and also the way they sharpen is slightly different from what they were doing at the Fujiwara's workshop as well. So we're very excited to encourage those young blacksmiths to develop their own skills and also to develop the new products out of them. We haven't got their knives yet, but we're excited to have them arrive probably early summer. So we're gonna, what we are going to get is very simple 
Kroche knife with white carbon number one steels. That steel is something that they have been working with for a very long time out of Fujiwara, so they're very good at it, but they put their own twist on making the edge a little bit more even and thinner. So it will be very, very nice, and I'm very excited to see that actually arriving in hopefully in a couple months. One of the really exciting thing about them is that because they're independent, they could actually go out and see other workshops. It was not prohibited or anything like that, but because they were working for Fujiwara's workshop, that was basically, you know, like that's their workshop, right? But now they were able to visit the other blacksmith shops and learn what they do different. And hopefully something really, really good comes out from that trip. So Isamitsu knives have such bright future ahead. So stay tuned for those knives to arrive. Next, Takumi Ikeda-san from Takefu Knife Village. 2022 was the big year for Ikeda-san. That was the year that Anryu-san passed the torch to Ikeda-san to take over the Anryu Hamono. Now Ikeda-san is head of the Anryu Hamono workshop. Since then, he's been ramping up his production and trying some new stuff, one of which is the Tinker knife lines that he works with the Shibata-san. As you can see here, this is one of his newer forged shape called Barracuda. This is inspired by more traditional European Western boning knife, but it's got very nice agility, nice thickness at the spine, and Shibata-san finishes with his magical touch on the uh, edge as well as the spine and the choil. Even though he took the Anryu Hamono in 2022, he was the main engine of the Anryu Hamono for more than five years. Now though, because he's taken over and he's a head of Anryu Hamono, he can try new things. So the um, Tinker series that he's working with the Shibata-san is fantastic. The way that he forges the Tinker series is quite a bit different from the conventional way that's been passed down in that particular area. If you're one of those lucky ones who owns the Tinker knives, pay attention to how he's done. Look at how he forged, because he forges into the almost like a finished product. Then, he sends off to Shibata-san, he finishes sharpening. When I spoke with him, he told me that the, his philosophy of knife making is always, always diligence. Take each step seriously so that the finished product will be as good as it should be. We don't know exactly what they have in plans for the future, but we're certainly excited to see what the future is. So next one up is the blacksmith named Toru Tamura. For those of you who's been to our shop in Calgary, you might have seen a bass guitar hanging inside the store. That is certainly Toru Tamura-san's bass guitar. He used to work for us over 10 years ago. When he was in Canada, he worked at Nightwear Calgary and he was in the band. That's why he brought his bass guitar. And the band's name, for your interest, was Peach Legs. But anyhow, when he went back to Japan after a year of working holiday, he wanted to become a knife maker. So he started actually working at the Hiroshi Kato-san's workshop in Takefu Knife Village. He apprenticed there for a little while, then he went to work for Shimizu-san, who is great knife maker for single bevel knives as well as Maguro Bocho. What he ended up is now he is in the Kochi Prefecture blacksmith and blaze for this company called Myojin Riki. He does even do this technique called Nimai Uchi, the double forging in Tosa area, which is not common to do in that area. Now he's partnering up with Naohito Myojin as Tetsujin. Naohito Myojin is this sharpener who is so talented. Now he takes 
lots of famed blacksmith blades and sharpen up to the excellent. Now we have the Sujihiki forged by Toru Tomura-san and sharpened by Naohito Myojin-san. From my perspective, Toru Tomura-san is a little bit more traditionalist. He likes to work with those traditional steels like a carbon steel. White, blue, those carbon steels and make it into the shape as thin as they can. Because Toru Tomura-san learned how to forge double bevel knives in the Takefu knife village, he forges a little bit thinner than many Tosa blacksmiths does. Naohito Myojin-san, he learned sharpening skills from many different regions. He learned it from Echizen as well as Sakai. So he is recognized by famed sharpeners and blacksmiths in all over Japan. And they would like to send the blades to Naohito Myojin-san to get them sharpened. Partnering up these two guys together, I'm very excited to see what the future brings to those two young blacksmiths. Nelson, you, you got fat. I'm like, yeah, it's been what, um, 10 years? <laughs> <laughs> Last but never least, Satoshi Nakagawa-san from Sakai. Satoshi Nakagawa-san, he's very talented young blacksmith out of Sakai who apprenticed under Shiraki-san for over 16 years. In 2022, he started his own workshop called Nakagawa Hamono, actually taking over old Shiraki Hamono workshop. Now, he's producing probably one of the most beautiful blades out of that particular area. So as I said earlier, there aren't that many blacksmiths who can forge single bevels and double bevels at the same quality. Well, Nekegawa-san, he can forge single bevels really, really well, as well as beautiful double bevel. He can do beautiful honyaki blade at very, very low failure rate. Yes. Honyaki blades are harder. Some people can attain up to 30% of success rate. When you make 10, only three are successful. He flipped the number and his success rate is over 70% or even more. He can work with so many different steels as well. White number three, two, one, blue number two, blue number one. Ginsan, VG10, all those steels he can work flawlessly. So when we visited him in 2022, we're so impressed. He was so organized and his work was so flawless that he was probably producing as twice as many debas in the same time as maybe other blacksmith can. Very recently, he was awarded as the youngest blacksmith for Dento Kogeshi title. So Dento Kogeshi is this title it's awarded for those people who's been working in the traditional crafts. Usually the title tells you the skill and knowledge of that blacksmith has. So this pattern is so unique and so distinct that the no other blacksmith are making. So what I like about his knives is one, it's beautiful. His Damascus pattern is second to none. He's creating this Damascus pattern that nobody else can. Two, also, he sends off, for example, this knife to Naohito Myojin-san to sharpen. So his edge is really, really nice and thin and cuts so beautifully. So we've been working with one of the knife companies to create Honyaki blades forged by Nakagawa-san. And the pattern that he creates the um, so-called Hamon, the differential heat treatment line, so unique to Nakagawa-san that if you look at that blade, you can distinctly tell that is forged by Nakagawa-san. We're waiting on that knife to come in any time now. We're so excited to see what really he can bring to us in the near future. Before finishing it up, we would like to give honorable mention to this Canadian young blacksmith, Kenzie Aaron. Kenzie is based out of Camrose, Alberta, this small town, and he's been inspired by 
Japanese knife making. Last summer, us, along with Masashi Yamamoto-san, went to visit him in his workshop. Masashi Yamamoto-san and Kenzi got very good conversation. He's finishing his high school in June of this year. What he produces at his age is pretty amazing. He's got really nice distal taper by forging. He's got equipment. He has thoughts. Conversation he had with the Masashi Yamamoto-san was very intelligent. He's actually hoping to go to Japan, learn more skills, and or apprentice under Yamamoto-san pretty soon as well. So considering how good of his first batch of knives were, and after he graduated from high school, he thinks of doing full-time blacksmithing. Keep an eye out for all the knives coming up this year uh, at knifeware.com and all other stores. And let me know in the comments which blacksmiths you are most excited about.